What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to talk about a highly requested video and that is the scared, skittish, shy dog. Let's go ahead and roll intro and get moving on this thing. But before we start the video, what I want to tell you guys is my Inukshuk gear came in, so they sent me this, and they sent me this handy little box right here. In this box came along a second Inukshuk hat, which I really like the fact that these are flex fit hats. Um, they sent me two smalls, but well, they never asked me for the size, but they fit. Um, I'm a, I wear a medium for the flex fit, but these are awesome. These are great. Uh, sent me out this really cool decal, right? So bam, big Inukshuk. I'm gonna find a way to put that right up there. And some stickers, man. So. Well, I've already gave them out to the kids. So my Nook Shook stickers. And Nook Shook's a really good dog food, guys. And I, I wouldn't just peddle anything on the channel. Um, just go over there, have a look at the ingredients list for you guys that sells. And check them guys out. That is some probably really top-notch, high-quality dog feed. You know, and they feed this to sled dogs. I think this is what this was designed for. And what it was designed around is like sled dogging. And everybody knows how athletic them dogs got to be and how good their dog food needs to be and their diet needs to be. Well, let's go ahead and go right into the, the shy dog video, right? So shy dogs come in all shapes or sizes, all shapes and forms, right? So we, we have to understand that there's a couple things that look exactly like shyness or timidness, and that is timidness, shyness, fear, untrusting, um, a dog that is unsocialized. There's a lot of things that can cause a dog to look like this scared, timid dog that can otherwise just be fixed by befriending the dog, right? So there's a lot of the stuff that can be fixed by just being the dog's friend, okay? So first and foremost, we have to build trust, we have to build bond with a dog. We cannot expect a dog who does not know us or we have not taken any time to know this dog at all um, or spent any type of significant time with the dog and expect it to behave any type of way, right? Some dogs are just ultra confident. They have that packed in. They come right out of the box and they just kind of don't care, they operate how they operate and nothing interferes with that. Other dogs, not so much, right? So other dogs, they really have to be trusting, they really have to have some type of bond built there before they will do anything in front of you. Especially if we get a strange dog, a secondhand dog, a dog that is older and we get that dog, right? So any of these things can really turn a dog to looking like this timid kind of dog. And a lot of guys swear these dogs off and they will absolutely just get rid of it or call it. They do not want to deal with this headache because that's exactly what these dogs are. Each and every one of these dogs, um, their behavior shows the same with just a little bit of minute changes, right? A little bit of minute differences there. Um, for the most part, this is the dog that is not going to bark at the cage. This dog is not going to get on the tree. This dog is never going to shut up in the kennel or it will never make a peep in the kennel, right? So we have two of those. The dog will sit out there and it'll bark all day long. As soon as it sees you, it shuts up and it never barks again, right? So there's a ways that we can cause a dog to be a shy, timid, scared, untrustworthy, whatever you want to call it. And there's there's dogs that come that way. And some of the reasoning behind this is, uh, number one, if they get hurt, okay? So a dog that can get hurt uh, pretty badly or gets hurt uh, will can turn into this, right? They can turn into that, uh, that untrusting dog that, uh, you know, kind of, leery, I don't want to operate around anybody type of dog, and they can also turn into a shut down dog, right? And and these timid, scared dogs are notorious for this. I mean, it is almost, they compound the problem because they're scared and they're timid and they're shy, and then you try to try to try to try to get them to come out of the shell. And what happens is we end up getting frustrated and maybe we take it out on the dog, and then the dog looks even more like what we were trying to prevent. So they just run you in the circle of shutdownness, right? And a lot of them will do that. And once you get a dog to that stage, to that point, it is really our best interest to not put pressure on the dog to do anything, right? So one of the dogs that I've talked about here on the channel since I started the channel is my dog Hazard, okay? So I got Hazard, gift to me secondhand. I actually kind of saved that dog from getting cold and uh, it got gift to me. But that dog was the most scared, skittish, shy, afraid, untrusting dog that I have ever owned in my entire life. And I mean, if you've seen somebody from across the yard, he would hide in his doghouse, right? If you got him off the chain and you let him off, he would run from you. He didn't want no part of people. He didn't want no part of nothing. He didn't want no part of coons. He didn't want no part of anything. He was just a scared, shaking on a leaf dog. 
when I got him, which I kind of understood. I just knew that he had been through some things that he probably shouldn't have been through. But the way that I dealt with Hazard and the way that I got him out of that kind of issue is what I would do is I would take his dog food to him. Of course, he would go hide in his dog house and he would not come out uh, even for the dog food. And what I would do is I'd take dog food to him and I'd just sit on the dog house. Um, and I would sit on his dog house for an hour, two hours. And eventually he got to where he would come out of his dog house and eat the food while I was sitting there. And this was just kind of building this, hey, I'm not going to hurt you, I'm not going to do anything to you, but I can't interact with a dog that wants to run from me, I can't interact from a dog that doesn't want no part of me, and I don't want to cause a mishap, right? So if I go start being real hands-on with this dog, I start putting this dog through a lot of pressure, doing a lot of things really quick with a dog that is behaving that way, what we're asking for is uh, we're asking to get bit or we're asking to get a dog bit, right? So we're asking for problems, especially if they're in that severe of a condition. Other times, the dog will be all about you. They will just like you. They will be jumping for joy every time they see you, and they don't want to do anything but interact with you. Outside of that, if we try to get them to do anything outside of that, then they shut down. Then they don't want any part of it, right? So they have to have you involved, and it has to be a one-on-one -on -one thing with you and that dog for it to do anything, and that puts us in a very bad spot, especially for Kunan. We have to peel that off. So there's like this attachment thing that goes along with this, you know, dogs get attachment, anxiety, all this stuff. There's all these real conditions that dogs do suffer from outside of mistreatment, outside of mishaps or trauma, right? So there is actual conditions that dogs do suffer through and there's a way that we can help them cope through that and help them get behaving a little bit better. So if in particularly, if we have a dog, um, sometimes they will turn this way if we've hushed them extremely, right? If we've if they've been in the pen and they've been barking a lot and we've hushed them and hushed them and hushed them and hushed them and hushed them or, or we've went above and beyond like I'm going to shut that dog up this time and we zapped it, you know, burn it down or we went out there and we whooped on it, whatever the case may be and we've put kind of a fear streak in that dog to where it just doesn't want to bark much, it doesn't kind of trust you too much anymore. The way that um, I've had dogs that have been this way and I've, I've said it on a channel before, you know, there's been a couple dogs that I've had around that I have kind of ruined off of barking altogether by being a little too hard on them for barking out in the yard, barking on a chain and stuff like that. So the way that we need to remedy this is we need to just leave that dog alone. Okay, so number one, if the dog's out there and it just will not make a peep for you even when we're gone, if we've caused the dog to just shut off, what we need to do is we need to leave that dog out there. No bark collar, no shot collar, no nothing. And we leave the dog out there, leave it out there, leave it out there, leave it out there, right? Or leave it wherever it's put up at until the dog starts barking, okay? And usually they'll start off slow, maybe a bark here, a bark another couple hours later, and then the next day they'll bark a little bit more. And we need to get it to where this dog is just full blown barking its head off. I mean, we're not saying anything, we're not doing anything. Because the dog needs to understand, because sometimes what will happen is they'll think, oh, if I bark, it's happening, right? So we've stayed on top of it so well, we've kind of trained it in the dog's head to associate this uh, punishment or this issue or you yelling at them or whatever the case may be um, with barking so they just won't bark because they don't want this again so they need to kind of suck it up and go through the process of I can bark and we need to suck it up and go through the process of letting them bark and some dogs especially the dogs like I said this goes kind of two ways right and the dog that just never wants to bark and is always shied up and timid and don't want nothing to do with nobody and the other dog is kind of all about you and it only wants it to bark when you're gone, just barking for you. When you show up, it don't bark no more because it's got what it's wanted, okay? So these dogs are just gonna let them sit out there and they're gonna bark and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark. And they just will not shut up. Some of these dogs will bark for two, three days, right? Straight. And uh, we'll just let them bark and bark and bark and bark until they stop barking after you and then they'll start in barking regularly right so they'll just be barking not for you or not for something but just normal dog noise out there in the pen and once we get them to start barking they can understand like i can bark and he's not going to show up so now i need to i can bark for whatever i want i've kind of quit barking for him and now i can bark just whenever and then when they start barking whenever then we can kind of feel free to get out and mess around with them too a little more or be a socializing on them a little bit more. Because once they f figure out, like, um, barking doesn't get me to go out there, right? So if they're barking for us, 
ignore them, let them bark until they're done barking for you. Because that's the, the easiest way to translate to them, like you're barking at the wrong stuff, right? You need to be barking at whatever else. And the reason why I'm addressing barking so much is because these shy, timid dogs, this is usually what is associated with them. They do not want no part of the cage. They do not know, they do not want no bark uh, or no part of their own bark. A lot of these dogs, if you do get a bark out of them, you can almost look like, dang, that dog's crying, right? They, they almost, there's so much pent up whatever behind that dog shutting up, whether it be it's so scared, it's so untrusting, or it's so timid, or it's so shy, that when they do finally start barking, and it's almost like they start crying about it, right? So it's kind of like a big deal. And uh, so we need to let them get through that, right? And and one thing that I help can get help through this is when they're pups, is let them bark. Don't hush them so much, especially when they're young pups, because when you have them out in the pen and they can bark and bark and bark, they will figure it out, right? They can figure out, like, I can bark. And if we have a dog that we know has a big mouth, right? So we have a really, really loud mouth dog and we expect it to be really, really loud mouth on the tree. Um, and we, we've heard it bark loud before, but we've hushed it so much in the kennel, we've caused it to be a quiet mouth dog. So they're just going yipping or whining loud maybe giving one sharp bark and shutting it off. They're not getting back to that full potential, that full locked inness. And this tends to be the mainstay for a lot of these dogs that are these shy, timid, scared, untrusting, whatever you want to call it, dogs. And like I said, there's a lot of reasons behind why these dogs behave this way. Some of them are, are problems that we've created. Other of them are problems that they've learned or something's happened to them from somewhere else and they've got this way. Um, but, you know, spending lots of time with the dog and letting it know that you're to be trusted and just getting a dog out in the yard is a big one, right? So if we have a shy dog, we need the dog to be able to feel comfortable to operate normally around us without having to be so worried about it or untrusting about it, especially the strange dogs. Some dogs, they'll come to you and they'll just be ready to rip. No issues. Other dogs come to you just because they have issues, right? So that is a huge thing. That's a huge thing that we run into, especially in the Coonhound world, is we get these problematic dogs or these dogs that have had issues put on them. And we need to understand that if we can alleviate that pressure and some of these issues will go away and some of these issues will not be a problem for you if we take the time and do the patience and go through the process that we need to go through. So, you know, just being in the presence of a dog that is uncomfortable without being pressing, without putting pressure on the dog to interact or do anything for that matter, can go a long way in building that one little step. And some dogs, they need a couple clicks of this, right? So some dogs, they'll go, okay, well, I don't trust him. I'm not going to come out of my dog house. And then we'll sit on the dog house and then they'll come out of the dog house. But then we take them out off leash and we cut them off leash and then they won't trust us. Well, I don't know if I can be around him out here. So we need all this little miniature bits of progress to get them to a confident dog or at least confident around us. Or we have the dog that goes, oh, I can come around out of the dog house with him here and he doesn't do nothing. I'm completely fine with this person. I don't need any more work. I'm done. I don't need any more steps to work out of this. Um, another big thing is, is the, the female dogs, and I say this a lot on the channel, the female dogs, they figure out what you want out of them, right? So if I'm going to the female dog and I'm going bark, hey, bark for me, bark for me, bark for this, bark at this, bark at this. They might do it a couple times for you, but then they will use that against you. They'll go, oh, he wants me to do something for him. I'm not going to, right? So they'll do it to spite you. We have to be more stubborn than the dog. We have to wait them out, and we can we can shut them in and case them into their own little isolation box until they decide to quit their business, right? And I don't mean like put them in some little torture chair. I mean like leave them alone. Put them off. Leave them alone. Don't let them get interaction from anywhere else and besides just feeding time. Um, what I like to do is I'll send somebody else to feed. I won't even show up to feed. So if I have a dog that I'm trying to do this to, I will send somebody else to go feed the dog if I have somebody willing to do that, right? So you're going to get, you want me, but I want you to bark. You're not getting me without you barking at what I want you to bark at, right? So we can box them in, eliminate options. There's a lot of the stuff on the channel, a lot of the videos on the channel are specifically geared towards dogs that have these kind of tendencies, dogs that tend to be uh, untrusting, right? So they're strange dogs, secondhand dogs, 
dogs that are having issues because they've been hurt uh, out running or getting snapped at by other dogs or whatever the case may be. So this is another, a lot of stuff on the channel will work for these dogs. And then that turns them into these scared, shy, timid, sensitive dogs. That's another big one that looks a lot like this is the sensitivity level of a dog, right? Some dogs, you could take a blow horn and just scream as top of your lungs to shut up and they will not ever shut up. Uh, another dog, you go out there and be like, shut up and it'll be broke and its heart will be broke for six months it ain't never gonna bark again because you've done it so bad right so it's just kind of like you never know what happens you never know the ripple effects so we have to be careful and understanding what causes this why it is happening for the specific dog what actually is it is it shyness is it on trustiness is it on socialization? Is the dog actually having a actual issue? Um, is the dog developed an issue? Have we caused a dog? There's a lot of reasons for a dog to act and behave that way. And we need to figure it out so we can remedy it through other means or all these means that we need to use together. So thank you guys for coming in, checking out the channel and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Nookshook, Dogster.com, and Dog and Hunt. They're all, you know, done me solid over here on the channel. So I greatly appreciate that from you guys, if you guys watch. And uh, y'all, keep them treated.